Hi guys, I thought I would start vlogging a, a short monthly roundup of things I've spotted online that I thought were of interest and maybe what I'm up to. Uh, mostly sewing related and with the odd little bit of knitting etc. So to start, first things first, I um, backed two really interesting Kickstarter campaigns which I'm sure you've seen yesterday. So the first of these is Sarah from Like So Amazing. So she's attempting to open a bricks and mortar fabric shop in Bristol and she's got a Kickstarter underway at the moment. And then the second is Selkie Patterns. So this is Alexandra of So Happy Alex um, and Caroline. And it's a really interesting um, concept actually because they are um, combining pattern design. So they have a first um, pattern, a dress and top pattern called London. They're also um, designing some fabrics. So the Kickstarter includes their first fabric designs, um, but also the whole ethos of the business is around sustainability um, and transparency in terms of manufacturing. So it sounds like a really interesting um, company as it, as it develops uh, after the Kickstarter. So check those two out. So next thing on my list was about meetups. So next Saturday, um, in a week's time, I'm off to Silk North, organised by Becca and Sally. Um, and uh, really looking forward to it. I haven't been to Silk North before. And then the um, in a month's time, it's my own meetup, so Brum. So that's Saturday, the 27th of October. Um, and um, similar to Silk North, so both meetups start in John Lewis in the morning and then obviously there's lots of time for socialising and fabric shopping. So um, I know Silk North have got a, a capacity limit because of the venue, so I don't think there are any spaces. Um, but so Brum, you'll be very welcome and, and definitely check out, keep an eye on Silk North for next year. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention in terms of events was the Dressmakers Ball, which is organised by Crafty So and So in Leicester, and it's their second year. And it, actually, this has sold out, but I just wanted to mention um, how amazing that was and say massive congratulations to the team at Crafty So and So. And that's another one. If you're going, I'm, I have a ticket, so I'll see you there. Um, and if not, keep an eye on it for future years. Um, have a, you know, have a nose what happens this year, and then uh, get ready to purchase. Shum and the girls run it again for year three. So the other thing in terms of events that I thought you might be interested in, so I'm a member of the um, uh, Birmingham Guild of Weaver Spinners and Dyers and I also volunteer for the, the National Association. So I do their social media and their newsletter. And there's a couple of uh, cool events coming up that people who knit or who spin, weave or dye might be interested in. So the first one, so my own guild, um, Birmingham, is putting on an event along with other Midlands guilds um, called Guilds Together Inspires. I've retweeted it, so you'll be able to find it um, and repost it on Instagram. You'll be able to find the flyer. It's Saturday the 6th of October in Coventry, um, and it's um, Midlands guilds come together. It happens every couple of years. Um, so there's a sale table with some bargains. There's uh, tea and cake. Um, there's a demonstration of the by the uh, members of the Midlands Guilds, but also this year there's a talk by John Arben um, about British fibres and about his mill um, down in uh, Devon or Cornwall, I forget exactly where it's located. Um, and um, I have no doubt he'll have some things for sale as well. So that's worth checking out if you're local to Coventry and you're a, a knitter or a spinner. Um, and the other thing, um, the other event from my guild, so the, the Association of Weaver Spinners and Dyers, they put on um, three national events um, and each one takes place every other year. So there's a national exhibition um, of work by members, there's a conference and there's also a summer school and the summer school is probably the most exciting. Um, so it's a whole week long summer school, um, which it, it's residential and um, I mean you can opt to not do the residential but you know, it's a residential uh, summer school and you do a week-long course in um in weaving spinning or dyeing or there are some related crafts so there's normally a knitting uh, uh, course as well um, and i just thought it might be of interest because typically there's a, a beginner's option in all three of those crafts so i've um so the next summer school doesn't take place till next august so it's august 2019 um so worth checking out if you're um either already uh 
a, a practitioner of one of those crafts or you're interested in learning um, because you, it's an opportunity to spend a whole week learning or developing a craft. So I've um, submitted an application and I'm, um, I've am asked to do either a week-long course in learning how to weave tweeds and tartans and again that accepts beginners, beginner weavers or, or near beginners. Um, I My Second choice is to do a course in dyeing, which covers natural and um, uh, synthetic dyeing. Um, and again, that one accepts beginners. Um, and you get to take a, a longer range of um, fabric, yarn, etc. Um, and similarly, there are um, courses which accept beginner spinners as well. So it's worth checking out if that's something that might be of interest. Um, so that's for events. So... Oh, so in terms of sewing, so I guess the biggest, um, well, there's two things happening right now. So one is Sew Photo Hop on Instagram, which I've been intermittently participating in. I, I tend to um, keep an eye on it. And then if the prompts, um, you know, if the re- prompts speak to me and there's something I'd like to respond with, I take part. And some days I obviously miss out. The other one, um, but I've loved seeing what everyone is posting as part of Sew Photo Hub. And the other one is obviously the refashioners organised by Porsche, the makery. Um, it's always so inspiring. I absolutely love what uh, reading all the refashioners' blog posts. Uh, I did participate uh, maybe three years ago now when it was the men's shirt refashion challenge. I actually finished and blogged um, a piece. The last two years, so the jeans refashion challenge, I had a load of pairs of Phil's jeans ready to go, never got around to it. Last year, the men's suit refashion, I did get purchase a man's suit from a charity shop, started, had some issues, never finished. So this year, I'm really hoping to actually um, complete a refashion within the time limit and blog something and really part- participate in the, um, the refreshers challenge. Um, I'm not going to give too many clues away about what I'm thinking about, but this is potentially one of the materials. Um, so I think I should go whole hog really, come up with a whole um, outfit rather than a single garment. So yes, we'll see how I get on. But this may end up in the bin if it all goes wrong, but uh, yeah, that's one of my materials that I'm going to try and have a look at later today. Um, it's uh, Sunday today, late Sunday afternoon, I think maybe working on my refreshers project so yeah and um in terms of the refreshers that have been blogged mirrors has been is my favorite so far it's been absolutely amazing and my all-time favorite which is definitely worth a reread is used um zebra jacket from last year that was just a superb refashion so um the other thing in terms of sewing um what's happening in sewing world that i'm uh, really liked was the Pauline Alice re-releases of her, a couple of her patterns, the knee knot jacket and the cami dress. I thought that was, uh, it's just really great reminder of those great little patterns. I think sometimes when a pattern has been around for a long time, we tend to overlook it. And I think refreshing it, new photos, there was some obviously alterations to the pattern too. Um, and I know the knee knot jacket in particular has an, uh, another variation added. So yeah, I've really loved seeing those and um, I definitely think both of those patterns, the the coat and the dress, I would love to get around to making at some point, hopefully. So um, yes, so books. So this is something else I wanted to share. So um, I was in London last weekend for a um, meeting and uh, treated myself to a little trip to foils on the way home and spotted you may have already seen them but the vna have uh, re-released a number of fashion designer autobiographies um and they're really nice set got some really nice artwork so i purchased two so i got the mary quant issue um and the chaparelli there we are um, there were another two that uh, were on display in foils. There was Christian Dior's autobiography and Barbara Hulanicki's. Um, I've actually already read both of those, so I didn't purchase those two, but I would highly recommend. I, I haven't read these two yet, so I don't know how interesting they are as or how well written as autobiographies, but Dior and Hulanicki in particular, I'd highly recommend if you're looking for uh, the next book. The other book that I wanted to mention was this lovely book, um, that Pavilion have recently published um, about indigo. Um, And yeah, it's lovely. It really talks you through. So it starts with the history of indigo um, and about the plant itself, different types. 
Um, and then it works through to the practical. So it really tell, teaches you about dyeing with indigo. Um, and in quite a lot of detail because obviously the whole book is focused on indigo so they can really go into um, a lot of detail. So there are um, information on uh, things that might go wrong, you know, if you get different results that you're not happy with, what that might be, things like blotchy and uneven, for example. And then it goes through various different recipes um, for indigo vats so that you can try some alternatives or have a look and see what you're comfortable with and what might work for you, depending on um, where you're doing your dyeing. It talks about um, combining indigo with other pig pigments to see what uh, colors, different colours you can achieve. Um, because indigo is one that is really good for over dyeing. Um, and then it also goes into a number of, um, so after the dyeing recipes, it goes into some specific projects um, in terms of resist dyeing, shibori, uh, etc. Yeah, and there's some really nice, some lovely illustrations as well as some really nice photographs of the kind of effects you can achieve. So yeah, just a really lovely book. Um, yeah, and the well, the subtitle for it is Cultivate, Die and Create. So as I say, it really goes through all of those steps. So yeah, highly recommend that one. I'm hoping to um, try out a couple of the, well, the recipes and the dye projects sometime soon and then I'll get those on the blog. Yeah, there's even some lovely um, darning and patching techniques at the back. So that's um, Indigo uh, and published by Pavilion. Okay, so uh, the other things, I wanted to mention a couple of my famous, uh, my favourite blog posts um, over the last month or so. Um, so one of the things I really enjoy is when bloggers blog a pattern that I've overlooked or forgotten about or uh, have never even uh, been conscious of in the first place. And I think there were a couple of really good examples of that recently. So Rasheen um, from Dolly Clackett made a version of the Madeline skirt by Victory Patterns. So this is a slightly older pattern. So um, it's one that I was conscious of, but I never really considered making um, and had gone out, kind of gone out of mind because it's, um, well, given how many patterns are released every month, it's, it's easy to uh, forget those slightly older but yeah um, she made an absolutely lovely version of this skirt it just looks so flattering um, and I'm sure that lots of people will be revisiting this pattern as a result so that's one that I um, yeah definitely put it onto my to make future to make list um, and then the other one was Anne from the compulsive seamstress so she shows a lot of birder patterns um, which I must admit I um, I kind of flick through birder and have a nose but then don't um, follow through and actually make anything from the magazine really um but she makes some lovely um projects for herself and for her daughters and i especially loved a, a birder paper bag a paper bag neckline top that she's made um for a daughter which if you look at the picture on the actual um product photo on birder.com it, it really looks very nothing it's not a very good photo it really doesn't show off the the um top but Anne's version is just absolutely lovely. So yeah, that's another one that I'd highly recommend. Um, the other blog posts that or blog posts I really enjoyed this month, Kate Davis, um, the knitwear um, uh, knitting designer, author, etc., yarn producer. Um, she's really inspiring. If you don't follow her blog, I would highly recommend it. She writes beautifully, and um, her husband's photographs. He's her. Uh, takes her blog photos and they're absolutely beautiful as well he's a great photographer so highly recommend her blog in general um, and she published a couple of blog posts this month about um, making things locally what that means um, and uh, the potential that people sometimes uh, focus on local or it, it can be used so you know made in Britain or made locally tag can be used um, in a way that's deceptive and actually that the focus should be on transparency 
um, on things being ethically made, and um, wherever that might be in the world. But then also actually the benefits for things really being made locally um, as well, where it's not just being used as a label, but it really is working with your community and helping uh, develop that. So it was there was a series of two posts. I'd highly recommend them. They're really interesting, um, and also related to those. So uh, she published those posts in the run up to launching. Um, some commercially produced um, uh, jumpers. So there's two designs that she's produced and they're absolutely lovely. So if you um, aren't a knitter or you are, but you can't knit as many jumpers as you'd like to wear, they're definitely worth a look. Um, yeah, they're really beautiful. All her designs are, are lovely. Um, and the other thing that I was gonna mention in terms of knitting um, is if you uh, are aware of Pom Pom Magazine, um, their most recent issue, um, so it's a great magazine, they have some beautiful um, knitwear designs every month, but their most recent um, issue was on the theme of Luna or the moon, um, and it's absolute, an absolute stunner, it was a particularly beautiful issue, and it, I think it's been their best ever selling issue, it's sold out. Um, and but they're going to reprint and you can pre-order so if you're looking for your next knitting project I'd definitely say that's worth checking out um, and maybe getting a pre-order in if there's something in there that uh, catches your fancy so thanks for watching guys and um, that was my little update for September hopefully I'll be back once a month with things that I've spotted online and um, we shall see uh, depending on how organized they are but enjoy your the rest of your Sunday and uh, have a good week